see the ducks in the pool they're gonna watch me make this video here they're used to me shooting okay today I'm gonna make a little video on my shooting form a little bit how I anchor for different uh, ranges we're gonna plot a narrow trajectory for the setup that I have for the plot to be wrong. Every bow, every arrow combination, every draw weight, draw length is going to have a different arrow traje trajectory for their setup. And what we're going to do is plot it. So we're going to know close, medium, and far. This will be great for 3D, for hunting, how we're going to anchor, how we're going to aim, how far we can aim exactly the same way and still impact a 10 ring or a lung area of a deer or bear. So we're gonna to start today. First thing you do is when you get your bow, you set it up properly. Never have a knock lower than 5 16 always 5 16 or above, just a rough start. Know what your um, <clears throat> brace height is for your bow, and you basically adjust the brace height till it's quiet, fairly quiet for the setup, within the recommended guidelines, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to find out once you set it up and you know where your point on is. When your point on is, like when I draw back, my middle finger goes to the corner of my mouth. The feather touches the tip of my nose. And we're going to see at what point I put that point on the target and it hits. That's my point on. From that point on, we can string along. And if you look at my glove, there's stitches so I could go down one stitch and slide to the top stitch I could go down two stitches whatever works and I'll, I'll show you that as we shoot okay so my point on is 20 I'll take a shot just to show you at 20 and how I do what I do is um, we're up here north we're coats, hunting coats I tell everybody like 45 degrees to the target but actually what I found a little bit like 30 degrees is a little better for me and I still don't hit my arm with a hunting coat on, the string don't hit, it's far enough away. And when I draw, there's different drawing, I tell everybody, don't hyperextend your arm because you'll get a recoil effect. Just put it out there. What works even a little better, a little more fine tuning, is if you picture a clock in front of you and you hold the bow up at 10 o'clock, okay? A little to the left, a little high, three under, okay, see my hands open, my hand is open, I hope you can see it, and then what we're going to do is I draw back, and bone on bone on bone, draw back, I'm over to the left, I twist around, now I'm holding it steady, okay, and I let go, okay, so I'm going to do that one more time shot a little high that time but I'm trying to talk and shoot so I'm going to show you this one more time okay I'm standing like 30 degrees three under I'm going to draw a 10 bone to bone twist around put my point where I want it and I'm going to be a shooting machine I don't use back tension because I have this damage but if you go to boat my video on bow grips you will see in you know, a how to grip a bow, uh, bare bow Joe, you'll see I explain back tension and uh, static release, okay? So you could reference some of my other videos. And as far as setting up the bow, you can go to uh, bare shaft and fletch shaft tuning. Also to reference how to tune your arrows to the bow to get good flight, okay? Like I said, when it all comes together, we're gonna plot our arrows. One more at 20 and then we're gonna start at 10. Now we're gonna go look, okay? Okay. These are at 20, okay, one's in a 10. This one while I was talking, it's close enough to show you. 
that if they're both a little high in the 10, that means that feather to the nose at 20 can go out further, okay? But I'm gonna teach you a little trick now for hunting close, at small targets close, 3D. Okay, it's looking down the arrow, okay? I'm gonna shut the video and I'm gonna start it again so we could show you nice and clean. Okay, we're gonna start at 10 yards. I'm gonna show you my close target, close deer hunting technique, okay? If you look at my face when I'm at 20 yards, what I do is I come back, middle finger to the corner of my mouth, feather to the tip of my nose, okay? When I'm up close, what I do is instead of touching here, I go right underneath, three under, but you see this little depression next to my eye here, above your cheekbone? What I do is I draw back and I lay my finger right in there, watch. See? And what that does allows me to put the point right on a deer, right on the bear, right on a small target at close range, put the point on and hit. The only thing you have to do is aim, <clears throat> aim like a, a fist to the right because what it is is, see where my hand is here? As you go up and lay it in, it comes away from your face a little bit. So it's like the rear sight of the gun, okay? When you move the hand to the right and you're putting the point on, the arrow's going to go a little left. So you aim a little to the right, that's all. If you're 3D shooting and you have these little, these little skunk targets and stuff that you hate to hit at the 3D tournaments, if you put it right in that groove right here, your hand, and you put it right to the side of the 10 ring, okay, and you'll have to be low at first, you know, like the bottom of the 10 ring on the right, it'll go right there. We're going to show you, okay? And when you, when you uh, aim at lower targets, you should bend at the waist to the target. So I'm shooting at the DS, so I don't have to bend much. Once again, 10 o'clock, bone on bone. I got to where I want to go. I put the, my hand right in that groove on my face. I let go, see, it's like a shooting machine. Now let's go see where the arrow hit. Okay, 10 ring, okay? And I just put it on the side of the 10 over here, okay? So now you see it's high, right? So because it's high, we can walk back. Now what we're gonna do is we plot at 10 yards, you can write down looking at the arrow that we're um, point on, right? Looking down the arrow, point on at 10 yards. You write that down on a piece of paper. Now we're gonna go back to 12 and see what happens, okay? And this is only a 35 pound bow. Okay, we're at 12 yards. Okay, we're gonna look down the arrow. I'm gonna put my hand in that, my top finger in that depression right there. I'm gonna aim to the right of the 10 or aim to the right where of a deer or a bear. Just about a fist, that's all, half a 10 ring. Let's see where this goes. I'm gonna hold up 10 o'clock, draw back bone on bone. Go in the groove, okay? Let's see. Okay, see where we are? We were like 10 here, 10 yards here. This is 12 yards. Now we're gonna go back to 14 and see what happens. Here I am at 14 yards now, and I'm going to look down the arrow. At some point, the arrow is going to go low, and we'll have to change the way we shoot. But for deer hunting, I know, see, this is a lightweight bow, 35 pounds, a lightweight arrow. 
I'm going to do this with my hunting setup, which is 45 pounds and a heavier grain per inch arrow. Of the speed difference and all, it should be about the same. Okay, we're going to plot it. I'm going to plot it before hunting season to make sure. Okay, let's see what happens at 14 yards. Let's see if it's too much. Okay, 10 o'clock, draw. Okay, that time I didn't aim enough to the right, but I'll show you where it went. It's still good. I can still log it. Okay, I didn't aim to the right. I aimed right on, and you see where it went? I'm still in the 10 ring. Okay, so that means basically real close to 14 yards, I'm still hitting. All right, I'm going to change it up for 14. I'm going to show you what I do. I mean, for 15, I'm going to show you what I do from 15 on out next, okay? So we're going to plot this too. So 10 to 14. Looking down the arrow, aiming a little to the right, just a little bit. You know, so even if you shot out a deer and you came up the back leg and hit it, you'd still be in the lungs. Okay. We're at 15 yards now. At 14 yards, I was looking down the arrow, and it's at the lower part of the 10, so I think I'm good there. The next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to gap. I'm going to gap from 15 out to see how or how it goes. Okay, now if you look, a lot of people don't realize you could do this. I have this American leather glove that's got stitches. See the stitches on the side and stitches row on the top and the bottom? Okay, I'm gonna go down two stitches and bring the top row down. Okay, middle finger to the corner of my mouth, point on. Okay, so that's two stitches. I slid my glove down to the top row and we're gonna see how it shoots. Point on, and this is 15 yards right here. Start at 10 o'clock, draw, little finger in the corner of my mouth. Okay. Let's go check it out, then we'll mark it. I went down two stitches, just to show you, it's a little low. What we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take that shot over one stitch down. Okay, and we're gonna plot it. See, two stitches was too low. We're gonna try one stitch now. Okay, I wanna show you how I string walk with the American leather glove. And what I do is three under, I come up to the knock, and you see the stitches on the side and the top row that goes across. I put my nail one stitch down and I slide the top row down, okay? And you see that? That is how I use the stitches on the spine of the glove to string walk, okay? Once again, this is my American leather buffalo glove, and I use it to string walk like a tab because I don't like tabs. Okay, we're going to do the same 15-yard shot. One stitch down. Put my nail there, see? I'm going to slide the top row down to my nail, okay? 15 yards. I'm going to draw. 10 o'clock. I'm 35 degrees about. 35, 35 degrees to the target. Draw at 10 o'clock. Bone, bone, bone. Hold steady. Okay, now let's take, check that out. The one stitch down. Okay, now you see the one stitch down is at the top of the 10 ring. So we're going to keep on going one stitch down, maybe a couple more yards at a time to see at what point it's too low. And we're going to plot it, okay? So 15 is one stitch down, point on, and it comes out good. It's in the 10 ring, a little high.
Okay, we're gonna go one stitch down again, and we're at 17 yards. We're gonna see where it impacts, point on, and then we're gonna lock it. One stitch down, drop the top row to my fingernail with these gloves. Drawer at 10 o'clock, okay? Bone on bone, come down, I'm gonna hold it firm. Okay, see my hands there? Let's go see where 17 yards hit. Okay, 17 yards. 15 was high a little bit, but in the 10 ring, which is still a good kill area for hunting. And 17 is kind of like point on now, one stitch down. Now we have a choice. We could either go to 18 and jump to the feather to the nose. But what we'll do is we'll go one stitch down at 18, see if it's low. If it's low, we'll do another one feather to the nose. Okay. So the short range targets, we're all looking down. Now this is what I call the mid range targets. 15, 17, and we're gonna do 18. Then we'll go to the long range targets and see what happens. Okay, here we are at 18 yards. I'm gonna go one stitch down again. And this is kinda at the end of the limits of that one stitch down, I believe. So we'll see. Ten o'clock, bone on bone. I'm going to come down when I get to my spot. I'm going to hold. Okay. I'm going to show you where that impacted. That's the low arrow. So at 18 yards, I'm gonna try right now, feather to the nose, and see, the, remember the bottom arrow is the one stitch down. I'm gonna try at 18 yards, feather to the nose, point on, and see what happens. Getting a little tired, you saw me start to collapse, but I, I recovered, okay. Let's go down and check it out. Rough getting old. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so. One stitch down at 18 yards is low. I think for hunting in 3D, I'd rather be on the top of the 10 ring, okay? So this is feather to the nose, aiming here, and it'll wind up in top of the 10 ring, okay? This is 18 yards. Now at 18 yards, feather to the nose, that should give me a ways down. I should get, you know, from 18 maybe to, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, now we're going to see the trajectory feather to the nose at 20 yards. I know you've seen me taking one shot at a time. And I know people will question that. How do you know that that one shot's good? I have fairly good form, and at 20, out to 20 yards, I'm pretty accurate. Okay, but there's nothing wrong with taking two, three shots to make sure that your arrow's hitting exactly where you want for plotting the arrows. And again, like now, I'm getting tired. You know, really focusing, trying to hit where I want, you know. And um, so maybe if you're doing this, you could do it in two or three days to plot it on a piece of paper. And uh, then when you go hunting or you're at a 3D tournament, you know, looking down their arrow, your range for short distance, um, you know, a stitch. Or if you don't have stitches or anything, you could just put your fingernail. Everybody kind of knows what a quarter of an inch is. Put a quarter of an inch down, move your glove to that, or tab, you know, and just see where you hit, okay? 
the reason I don't use a tab with the stitches is because I whack my nose. If you look at Babo Joe, why Babo shooters have tape on their nose, I did a slow motion video you can watch of me whacking my nose, all right, <laughs> with the tab. So at any rate, I'm going to take one at 20 now. We'll see how it flies, okay? But we both we all know that 20 is kind of, I said earlier, 20 is my point on. You know, and I took a shot earlier, and you saw it was pretty much my point on. But we'll do it again. Okay. Feather to my nose. We're going to draw a 10. Okay. See, now I said I was a little tired. It kind of went where I wanted it to. But we're going to take the second shot. And I already know that at 20 yards, it's in that 10 ring. It's in that kill area. The next one we're going to do is we're going to do after this is 22 yards. And then I'm going to change my anchor. Okay, let's go down and check it out. said I'm getting a little tired sent two arrows down Let's see where they impacted okay 20 yards like I said my point on All right they're still a little high touching the 10 line they're in the 10 this is probably the better of the two shots I took we're gonna go back now we're going to go back to uh, 22 yards and see where it goes. Okay, check out the ducks. They were in the pool. They were in the pool, and now I'm shooting. They went to the backyard, and now they're going back to the pool again, I guess. But okay, enough of the ducks. Oh, there they go. Going in the pool. They like to watch me shoot. It's kind of a crazy thing. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. Okay, I'm at 22 yards. Feather to the nose, point on. Just to let you know, when I come back, right, when I touch anchor, see my elbow? I make sure my elbow is all the way back, you know, we can't go no more, that's in line. Okay, because if it's out, it ain't right. It's got to be all the way back where you can't go no more. Alright, then I do a static release. If you were to do back tension, it's a 30 degree angle of your elbow downward. It's the only way you could suck it you on, okay? Just to show you, because when I took this shot, I made sure my elbow was back and it's right on. Okay, so we're at 22 yards. Let's see where it impacted. Okay, as you can see, 22 yards is on the bottom of the 10 ring. So I can go from 18 to 22 yards, feather to the nose, putting my point in the middle, and I know I'll be in the 10 ring, or I'll be in the kill area of a deer, bear, whatever, okay? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm going to do at 25 yards. It's a little bit of a change up because of the light bulb. Feather to the nose at 25 yards, at 22 yards. So we have 
have to change something in order to hit the 10 ring at 25 yards now. So I'm going to take two shots and show you two different things that you can do. A lot of guys will see where the 10 ring is. I can barely see it. My eyes aren't that good. But I know the back strap, the bottom of the back strap is probably three fingers, okay, above the 10 ring. So I'm going to go feather to the nose and aim for the top of the 10 ring three inches high, like the third. I'm going to aim for the back strap and we'll see where it goes. And then I'm going to change my anchor point. I just want to show you that there's options. A lot of people don't like to change anchor points for different ranges. So first one will be, I'm going to aim at the back strap, we'll see where it goes, feather to the nose. Okay, that was a good shot. Now, I already know that this year, these limbs are very fast. They're 35 pounds, the Yucca Tulia limbs, Nature Revo, very fast. So I'm going to switch the top finger corner of my mouth, but I know they're going to fly high. So I'm going to go down one stitch. I'm just showing you that there's options. I know you, a lot of people ain't going to like this, but you could change your anchor points to get out to 40 yards if you want. Okay? There's different possibilities. There's all kinds of things you could do. It's up to you. So here we are. Three, I'm top fingers going to the corner of my mouth. I'm putting my fingernail one stitch down, sliding the top row of stitches with my American Leather Buffalo Glove. Okay, top finger to the corner of my mouth, put a point on, I'm going to see where it shoots. Actually, if we did that, I'm going to put it on the bottom of the pen. That's how fast it flies. Okay, where do you see this, how fast it flies, okay? So. Don't really worry about the right to left because I'm really tired at this point, okay? And I can't tell which one was which, <laughs> okay? But this gives you a good idea, okay? I aimed here, feather to the nose, and then one stitch down on the bottom of the 10, okay? And they both got good height. The one to the right could have been the, my bow grip or something. Okay, because if I plucked, it would have went to the left. So that was more like a bow grip issue, okay? So there's different things you could do, gonna do. We're gonna go back to 30 now, just for fun, just to get a plot. And I'm gonna stick with the top finger in the corner of my mouth, and we're gonna plot a 30 yard. I'm gonna see if 30 could be point on. I know this is a long, drawn out, boring video. But it's good, it's good to learn how to plot your arrows, what options you have for a lightweight bow to be able to get back a little further and shoot with the heavyweight bows, you know. So at some point, even though it's a really fast little 35 pound bow, um, the arrow just wants to drop. So at 25, it was one stitch down, point on, and we're pretty good. At 30, I know it drops a lot, so I'm going to top finger, corner of my mouth, okay, and I'm going to put it on top of the 10, okay, like maybe two fingers on top of the 10. And again, I can't see the 10, so I'm aiming for the below the back strap, okay, and that's a couple of fingers, okay. So here we go, let's see how it shoots, and then we'll be done, and um, what I'll do is I'll show you the paperwork, how I plotted it out what I use for different things. You can do whatever you want. You know, don't say, you know, I don't want anybody to comment that, oh, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do this. This is what I do, it works for me, I like it. I'm trying to share what I do, it may work for you. Okay, so let's give it a shot here. This is 30 yards. I'm gonna shoot the top, a couple of fingers above the 10, see what happens.
actually going a little hot. Got to take another one a little windy and I'm very tired. So we'll go down and show you both of them. Okay, you see where I'm staying? Sometimes when you release, you know it feels good. It's going to go where you want. That was the second shot. Let's go take a look. I'll show you. Okay, and this is going to be the end of the video. I'll post a picture of the yardages. And I hope at least you learn from my drawing technique, holding up at 10 o'clock, you feel a bone on bone, you swing down to it. It works for me. You could try it. Like I said, everybody's got to do what works for them. I have a stance that's, uh, like I said, I, I say 45 degrees most of the time for the hunting coats, but I'm a little more comfortable, like 30, 35 degrees. Okay. Okay, there we go. See the top one? You know what that amounts to? You're tired, things happen. And the bottom one's good. So I'm going to post it. I hope the video helped you. Plot your arrows so you know what your effective range is for each situation. It really helps with 3D and hunting. And then look at Bear Bow Joe for my other videos and walk back shooting to practice these techniques.